The definition of a salty dog is an experienced fisherman who has spent many years of his life on the water. Brian and I wanted to capture the experience of our local salty dogs in the Ocean City, Maryland area, and our first Salty Dog Chronicle features John McFalls. John's love of the tug started when he was a young boy. Uh, a guy who moved into our neighborhood who liked to fish, and I think I was 10 or 12 at the time, and he told me about fishing. The only thing I knew about fishing was Huckleberry Finn movie and Tom Sawyer, where you you know they had a, a cane pole or whatever. And he told me about it and I was interested, so he took me fishing. And we actually had to take a trolley car, and we would go out to where the Philadelphia International Airport is now, and that was marsh land, and you had some water from the, like creeks that would run into the Delaware River. And we fished that with worms and dough bait, and we caught a catfish and a carp. So that was my, that's my start. And then we graduated into uh, bluegills and bass. We started fishing in a reservoir outside of Philadelphia. John spent many years fishing freshwater and finally transitioned to saltwater when he was ready to retire. He searched up and down the East Coast looking for the right spot when he discovered a little gem called Ocean Pines. So then I came down here and I started fishing with using my little Boston whaler, fishing the inlet and the bays here. So, but I didn't know anything. So how did he become a salty dog? You read the coastal fishermen. They say, "Hey, guys, are catching flounder," and I joined. I joined the Ocean Pines Anglers, okay. and at the time I joined, that was like about '94 or so. We had six members. We, wow. we had our meetings around Art, Art Hansen started that club. We would have our meetings at his kitchen table. <laughs> now we're 140 <laughs> members. Wow. And I've been in it ever since. And I've been on the board of directors ever since. So I learned from those guys. Yeah, I'd go out with them and they'd say, hey, here's how you catch a flounder. You put you hook a minnow on, boom, you hook the minnow through the lips, you drop it, you have to get to the bottom, throw a two ounce sinker on there, and that's how you start doing it. That's, and then we started using, then I got into guys using bucktails, and guys would take me to the, they took me to the bridge, that guy there, those two guys, and uh, that's, I got into it that way. It was easy. <laughs> John's favorite fish is one near and dear to my heart, the striped bass. And for all the same reasons, the fight and the taste. And they readily hit artificials. Readily hit artificials. I've caught more striped bass on artificials than I ever caught on live bait. I've caught hundreds. What are his favorite lures? Well, the Roy rig is not a bad rig, not a bad lure. I, I would say I would put that at near the top. I'm with you. Yeah, it's it's good. It's a good lure, particular. But the Roy rigs wasn't around when I started fishing. We used ounce and a half bucktails, white with a little, little red, sort of a red band around the head, and we would put a Mister Twister on. And I, white was the predominant color. And we fished mostly at night, although I did I did a lot of fishing during the day also, but that was that was that was probably my favorite. We used those all the time, and it was easy to fish with those off the bridge. You could put five or six of those in your pocket. You know, park your car at the West End and walk across the bridge and you could fish, you know, and you have a pair of pliers and a bridge net and you could have all the fun in the world catching striped bass. Can't do that today, but you, you could at that time. John's favorite go-to lure is one Brian and I also rank as our number one. Half ounce spec rig. Outstanding. It catches everything. I've caught everything from keeper rockfish to flounder, uh, weak fish, Spotted sea trout, shad, shad just knock heck out of them. They love them. And bluefish. And the nice thing about them is you can, you can catch bluefish one after another. They don't tear the thing apart either, you know. So a spec rig is really good. And if, I, if my grandsons come, I can take them down, put a spec rig, take them out in the bridge at night, put a spec rig on, and they're not very good at casting, and they don't even have to cast. You put it out, and it just sits in the water, and the fish come up and hit it. It's amazing. He also uses live bait, minnows, spot, peanut bunker, and he likes to use a three-way rigging setup. Interestingly, John says he always uses circle hooks for flounder. 
and he must be doing something right. On December 6, 1999, John had his own Ernest Hemingway, Old Man, and the Bay experience. I went down to the bridge. I always fish the out. I like the beginning of the outgoing tide, and the out, the outgoing that, and I fished the tides. So if the tide was at one o'clock in the morning, that's when I went. So it happened to be one o'clock in the morning. So I went down and I was fishing on the south side of the bridge. The tide was going, had just started to go out, and I was down on the east side of the. I was at the east end of the bridge, and I was on the east side of the gate. Okay, if you can picture where I am now. Yep. Almost to the draw. Right. Almost to the draw. And I was using an eight, a two-ounce white jig head with an eight-ounce white uh, Mr. Twister. Okay. And I made a couple casts, and oh, I fished there a bit, and I got this terrific hit. And this fish really took off. And I knew I was on to something really good. And I remember looking at my watch, and it was 1.30 in the morning. And I looked around, and this fish headed for the inlet. Yeah. And there was just nothing I could do. <laughs> she was just running, I mean. And so I start working that fish, and I'm looking around saying, boy, if, if I have to net this thing now. You know, I knew it was a keeper. <laughs> or I had a big a big ray on, yeah. but uh, yeah, any chances are very good it was a, it was a big rock. So I don't look around. There's nobody on the bridge. This is terrible. Anyway. I worked at that fish then, and I finally got to the point where I, I got, I have a 28 inch net, okay? The fish is 44 inches. I, every time I get the fish in that, she'd get out, okay? So it was frustrating. And anyway, netting the fish can sometimes be more difficult than catching it on the bridge, really, with the current. Anyway, I decided I'm going to have to get this fish to shallow water. To, to get it. I can't, again, I'm looking. So anyway, I can't go toward Ocean City because you have those great big uh, structures in the water, so you can't get around those. So I said, I'm going to have to go toward Sh Shantytown was there at the time in okay. 1999. So I said, I'm going to have to go. So the first obstacle I have, I have to start walking this fish now. And it keeps keep, keep running, and I keep working, and I finally get it back to, to take off again. And I'm I mean, I was afraid I'd lose this, you know, lose this fish. So anyway, the first obstacle is the gate. You know, there's a, there's a gate there. That's a big structure. I climbed over the rail because there's a there's a platform that goes around the gate. I walk around, so I get on the and all the time this fish is going crazy. <laughs> so so I get back. Now I'm back on the bridge again, and I'm walking. Now every every light fixture. It's an obstacle because it's a big structure around the bottom. So you have to hand, I had a hand by rod around. Mm -hmm. And then I'd get down so far and I'd say, well, I'll try netting it again. And you can stick your rod. I used a 10-foot St. Croix rod with a big Daiwa reel. You could stick that rod in the link fence behind. Okay? And then you, so that's holding on. I'm hoping that, you know, it won't pull out. And I try to get to fit. Well, I must have had that fish in the net a dozen times. <laughs> Between between there and Shantytown, I kept going. I anyway, I just kept working and walking down, walking down. I finally got all the way. I had to go around every structure, and then I had to go. And nobody's around. I keep looking. No fishermen. Normally there are fishermen. Yeah. So anyway, and it, I mean, this is taking a long time. Let me tell you. I finally got all the way down to Shantytown, and there was a there's a there was a big bush. So on, now I'm now I'm on the west end of the bridge on the south side of on the south side and this fish now is exhausted as I am. Okay, so I then I, and the water's clear in December. The water's crystal clear. Yeah. I I pulled the fish up and I sat. She was in the shallow water. The water was only about that deep, and she just laying on her side. And by this time, and there's not much current there. And I stuck the net. I stuck my rod in. There was a big bush there. This bush was sitting there all by itself. And I stuffed the rod in there. My boy, hopefully, she'll get caught in it. But she was pretty exhausted. And I put the net down, and I pulled the line, and I just pulled her right over the net, and I lifted it up. Okay. Now I'm on the west end of the bridge. 
I laid a I laid a fish down on on the sidewalk. Yeah. I measured it. He's forty four <laughs> inches. Wow. I looked at my watch. It was four thirty. It took me three, three hours, hours. Three hours to get that fish in. So now I have a thirty six pound fish. <laughs> I actually put I pulled her like a head like a. Uh, uh, like you pull a wagon, you know, I put, I had a big, uh, big, I had a line, a piece of line in my pocket, a heavy line, yeah. and I put that through her, through her jaw, and I pulled her all the way down, I got home, of course I got home, it's now, it's 5.30 by the time I get home. So anyway, I called one of my buddies, Paul Green, I said, hey, Paul, you got to come over and see this fish. So he comes over. Where did we go? We went to Coastal Fisherman. We went to the door. We got Dale Timmons out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he came out, took a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and I said, I know I'm going to make the winter edition. I know it. I'm going to be on the front page in color. Yeah. Some guy caught a 52-inch one and beat me out. He was on the front page. Oh. Anyway, that was my story. of That's my best experience down here. It was oh. just great. Three hours to get oh. one wow. fish, but... That's the biggest fish. I, that's the biggest uh, striped bass I've ever caught. He's also had his share of close calls, but that's just part of being a salty dog. I had that thir thirteen foot Boston Whaler Sport, okay, with that little, and I had that little Honda on it, the thirty five Honda, and we were in the inlet. We were fishing the inlet for flounder, and the and the Patriot and the Sea Rocket both came by at the same time. We were totally swapped oh my gosh. the waves i couldn't believe it the you know the whaler's pretty low anyway right and i'm sitting in the well yes he's wooden <laughs> seats right the water was all the way up he couldn't he couldn't put any more water in it we were totally swamped but a boston whaler won't sink <laughs> we're sitting in water <laughs> i mean the only thing that's above water is the, the motor, the motor. <laughs> and i just put that i just each that throttle forward, and we're just going, like, we're like a submarine coming up, low. you know, Bry, you know, whatever they call it, you know, come on, what, yeah. what do they say that? Anyway, come on, you know, and it just kept coming up because it's a self bailing Oh, eventually we came right up. I could not believe it. I was scared to death. Yeah. Uh, it, the inlet can be, oh, you can get in a lot of trouble on that inlet. Yes, you can. Reflecting back on his many years fishing in the area, John says he's seen significant changes. I could go down the bridge and get big bluefish and weak fish almost any night. We've heard that. And you now, can't you no. can't catch up weak fish at all. And and now the, we never had a really good spotted sea trout fishery. We'd catch them occasionally, but w we did get a lot of weak fish. And I've got I think that one citation there is a weak fish, and I've got a couple of citations in the in the, in my garage on the wall. Uh, on weak fish that I've caught, but we could always catch. But you can't get them now at all. You can't even catch them. You know, they only have to. They have to be 13 inches, I think, and try to get a 13 inch or one stuff. You can't even get them. You can't catch any of them. Despite the decline in some species, John says the flounder are still prevalent. Fishing in the bay continues to provide a wonderful way to spend your weekend. And if you've just moved to the area or need help, John recommends checking out the MSSA or the Ocean Pines Anglers Club. In the meantime, John has his own favorite fishing partner, Frank Watkins. And why? I always tell him he he may he has made fishing a spectator sport for me because I watch him catch fish. He he because he's the guy that will try everything. He's got more lures in his box than you can shake a stick at. And he tries everything. If he'll run I've seen he'll fish four and five lines from his boat and I'll get I'll I'll be fishing one. And he'll have five different things on, all different colored uh, spro bucktails with a minnow, spro bucktail with uh, gulp. He just and if and if there's and if we're drifting too fast, he is a huge uh, it's a sea anchor he throws over to the side to slow the boat down. He he just he'll try anything. Which I, and I respect that. I just love it. And of course, if he starts hitting them on something, I can, I can switch over. You get over. on whatever he's on. Whatever he's on, I'll say, I'll have yeah. one of those. I'll have one of those too. I'll have one of those too. Cheers, John. Here's to your next catch. Mary and Brian Mullins for the Salty Dog Chronicles.